Sunday school. It's a little different, isn't it? But it's going to be so much fun. Happy Palm Sunday. I hope that you take some time to draw a palm leaf or color a palm leaf. Don't forget chalk on the sidewalk is super fun. I saw some beautiful stained glass windows when I was out walking. Have you made one? Palm leaves would make such pretty stained glass windows. Think about it. So our story today is going to help us understand what's going on right now. And it's a little sad because this part of Jesus' story is hard. But remember, it works out. God has a plan. It's a great plan. And it doesn't always go the way we want it to. But God knows what's going on. So in our story, Jesus has been preaching and he's been teaching with the disciples. And they've come into Jerusalem. And the people were so excited for a king. Hosanna, 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 they yelled. But they didn't quite get it right, did they? They were expecting a king like they'd seen before. A king with riches and jewels and who struts around and tells everybody what to do. And that's not the kind of king God had in mind for us. So the people paraded Jesus into Jerusalem and Jesus and his disciples gathered and they had supper together. Now at that time, they were just having the Passover dinner. They didn't realize, well, Jesus did, but the disciples didn't realize that this was their last dinner with Jesus. We call it the Last Supper now, but it, it, nobody knew then. Well, Jesus knew, right? Because God's out of plan. So our so-and-so show is about to start, and as usual, it's pretty silly. Now remember that this was made before we all had to stay home and stay away from each other. So John and Brandon are totally safe. This was made a while ago. All right, let's watch our Bible story video. I love you. See you in a few minutes. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be right with you. Oh. <laughs> this is all, sorry. Yes. Hello? Uh, yes, I was wondering if you could send over a painting restoration expert to my address. Yes, I need a painting that needs to be restorized. Yes? Yeah. Oh. Thank you. So friends. Hey to you and all of our viewers. From near and far. Welcome to the So-and-So Show. I'm John. And I'm Brandon. And we have got a show for you today. That we do. Why don't you tell them about it, John? Oh no, my friend, after you. I insist. No, after no, you. I insist after you. It's time to play a game we call After, after you. you. And now for everyone's favorite game show, After You. This is a game that requires humility, where you want to put the other person first. So, after you. What am I supposed to do? We're going to balance a cup of water on a book, on our heads. Okay. Water balancing. Oh, 
after you! Yes! <laughs> Holding your breath in a bucket of water. <gasps> after you! <laughs> Standing on a box while being hit with a palm frond. After you, after you, after you, after you. Nope. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Keeping a grape in your mouth. What does it have to do with humility? What? I said, what does this have to do? <laughs> After you. <sighs> Thanks for playing. After you. What a great game. Was it? Yeah, I'm so much more humble than you. I put you first every time. You did not put me first. Sure I did. No, you did not. Sure I did. I, you, I, you were the first to drop the water, the first to choke on a grape. I put you first in the game, which makes me first in putting you first. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe I should have put you first by telling you to put me first first. But if you put me first first, because I let you put me first, I'd still be first at putting you first, which means, oh, it was you who were putting me first all along. Well played, Brandon. Well played. Uh-huh. It's Bible story time with Kellen. What's up, guys? Not too much, Kellen. Just being soups humble. Oh, yeah? Well, then I've got a story for you. After you, Kellen. No, no, no. I... I'm humble. Thank you. Our story picks up just after Jesus shared what he knew would be his last supper with his disciples. His heart was very heavy, so Jesus led his disciples outside to a place called Gethsemane, a kind of garden with olive trees. And Jesus asked Peter, John, and James to keep watch so he could pray. The disciples sat and waited, tired after a full meal, while Jesus went off by himself to pray to God. It was not a happy prayer. Something very bad was going to happen to Jesus that night, and he knew it. He was so sad, so anxious, and he prayed to his Father in heaven with all his might. My Father... If it is possible, take this cup of suffering away from me. But let what you want be done, not what I want. He prayed this way for what felt like an hour. But when he returned to his friends, he found them sound asleep. Couldn't you keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray. Then you won't fall into sin when you are tempted. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Three times Jesus asked his disciples to stay awake while he prayed. And each time his friends fell asleep. And then it happened. Are you still sleeping? Look, the hour has come. The son of man is about to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Here comes the one who is handing me over to them. The disciples watched horrified as Judas, one of their friends, came up to Jesus, followed by a large crowd armed with clubs and swords. Greetings, Rabbi. Friend, do what you came to do. Judas went to Jesus at once and kissed him. This was Judas' signal to the armed men that Jesus was the one they should arrest. When they saw the signal, they grabbed Jesus. That's when Peter leapt into action. Peter took out a sword and lifted it. He swung the sword at the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. Yeah, go Peter. Woo! Yes, and then Jesus' disciples fought off the armed men and brought Jesus safely back home. Thanks for the story, Kellen. Yeah. Actually, that's not exactly what happened. Oh, don't ruin this happy ending for me, Kellen. Um, so Peter cut off the servant's ear. But then, 
Before things got completely out of hand, Jesus spoke out to the angry crowd. Put your sword back in its place. All who use the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I can't ask my father for help? He would send an army of angels right away. But then, how would the scriptures come true? They say it must happen in this way. Then Jesus touched the man's ear and healed him. But Jesus' disciples, his friends, ran, leaving Jesus alone. He was arrested and taken away. To be continued. That's not happy at all. I know, but that's what happened. In fact, things got even worse after that. Worse? I don't, I don't get why Jesus was arrested in the first place. He didn't do anything wrong. True. And if he could have called an army of angels to save the day, why didn't he do that? Well, it's like what Jesus said when he was praying. He told God, let what you want be done not what I want. Sure, he didn't deserve to be arrested. And sure, he could have easily done something miraculous to save himself. But Jesus knew that God had a bigger plan, so he put God first. And really, by putting God first, he was putting us first, because we were the reason God sent Jesus in the first place. Oh, so it is a happy ending? You'll have to wait until next time to find out. Ah, rats! Or, you know, you could ask somebody how it ends or read it in the Bible. It's a very famous story. Great idea, Kellen. Thank you for the story. Yeah, thanks. No problemo. I'll see you guys later. 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 Okay, so now we know where to turn to find out how to put others first. Yeah, the after you game. Oh, no. Jesus. Oh, right. Jesus! Jesus put his friends first, mm -hmm. even though they fell asleep when they should have been keeping watch. His enemies, too. He actually healed one of the guys who came to arrest yeah. him. He put everyone first, yeah. which brings me to a question. Go reveal the question! How do you put others first? Um, uh, by letting them order before me at a restaurant. Oh, yeah, or by watching what someone else wants to watch on TV. Uh, oh, see, that's why... You sat through 14 hours of baking shows with me last week. Yeah, and I still don't know what fondant is. You know what you win, friend? You win, my friend. You are definitely the most humble person Not alive. Not a competition. Well, you're number one. No. Nope. You're number one. You're number one. No, no. You know, you're putting me first, so uh, I'm number one. No, you're number two. You're number two. Talk about it together. You're number two. How do you put others first? And we'll see you next time on The So-and-So Show. <laughs> Can we go now? Oh, after you. Okay. Ah, <laughs> see? Now I'm number two. I'm number two. I'm number two. Wait. Ancient Romans used to use grapes as earplugs. I can't hear you. I've got a grape in my ear. I have a grape in my ear. I can't hear you. Do you oh. know what they used to use grapes for as well? Like so. When they swim, oh, you knocked one of my, I can hear, I can hear. Whoa, that was quite a story. Jesus put us first. God had a plan and it meant that he was thinking about us. He loved us so much that he sent Jesus and Jesus put us first. This part of the story is tricky, isn't it? It's hard to hear and think about, but remember, there's a big picture and there's so much joy at the end. So I want you to think about how do you put others first? You know what? You're doing it. You're staying home. That is amazing. You are putting others first by staying home. You are putting others first. I love that. Be proud of yourself. It is tricky. So this week, we call it Holy Week. This is the week that we really think about what it means when Jesus died on the cross and rose again. If you got your Easter garden card in the mail, you can start it today. And if you didn't get your card in the mail, moms and dads can check their emails in about an hour and I have a copy of the card in the email. It's a way for us to be together, even though we're separate, and remember Holy Week together. This is an opportunity to read a little bit in the Bible every day and as a family talk about what really happened in the story. We are going to think about how to put others first because you know what? 
Jesus changes everything and he did it for you. I hope you have a great week. I love you. And even though I don't see you, I see you. And I'm so glad you're there. Bye. Take care. I'll see you soon.